Hi boys and girls, welcome to another Seeds video. So glad that you're watching today. And in today's lesson, we actually are gonna to get to the very end of the Bible. That's right, we have made it in the Gospel Project from Genesis all the way to Revelation. And we're gonna do the last two chapters today. We're gonna to see the end of the amazing story of God's redeeming a people for himself, rescuing people, saving people. So we've been talking about how Jesus is going to return, and we're going to see that Jesus is going to return, and he's going to destroy all the evil. He's going to make everything new. When Jesus comes back, he will make all things right. So it's an exciting lesson for us. Hey, let's watch our video so that you can uh, see a video of what today's lesson is all about. So I'm getting our video uh, ready, and here's what today's lesson is going to be all about. John had a vision of heaven. He heard a large crowd of people praising God and rejoicing. John wrote about what he saw. John saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth was gone. He also saw the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven. He heard a loud voice from the throne saying, look, God will live with his people. <gasps> They will be his people, and he will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will no longer exist. Sadness, crying, and pain will no longer exist. John saw one of the angels come carry him to a great and high mountain. The angel showed John the holy city. It was shining with God's glory. The foundations of the city wall had every type of precious stone. The city street was made of pure gold, as clear as glass. John did not see a temple in the city, because the Lord and the Lamb were the city's temple. The city does not need the sun or the moon to shine on it. The glory of God gives light to the city, and there is no darkness. The city is safe and clean. Nothing unclean is in the city, and no one will do wrong things in the city. Only those whose names are in the Lamb's Book of Life will enter the city. The angel showed John the river of living water. It sparkled like crystal and flowed from God's throne down the middle of the wide city street. The tree of life was on both sides of the river, and it produced 12 kinds of fruit. God's throne will be in the city. God's servants will see his face and they will worship him. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Jesus said, listen, I am coming soon. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus is the one that says all these things will happen. He is coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Jesus promised to come back to earth soon. When Jesus returns, those who trust in Jesus will be with him and enjoy him forever. God will undo every bad thing caused by sin. No more death, no more pain, no more tears. Jesus is making all things new. Well, that is the super exciting ending uh, to the Bible, and I'm excited for our lesson today uh, as Jesus is going to come back and make everything right that is wrong. So uh, we've been talking about our big question, big answer throughout Revelation, what will happen when Jesus returns? Remember the answer? What will happen when Jesus returns? Jesus will destroy all evil and make all things new. That's what's going to happen when Jesus comes back. The end of all evil and making all things new. All right, and then we had our Bible verse for this whole book of Revelation. It comes from Revelation 21.5, and we finally made it to Revelation 21. We're going to see it today. He who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Revelation 21.5. What a day for us to look forward to. All right, uh, so our point for today's lesson, our last lesson in Revelation, is that Jesus will return, destroy evil, and make all things new. So Jesus is going to return. He's going to destroy evil 
He's going to make all things new. All right, we started out in the book of Revelation and uh, John had this amazing vision. Remember the revelation of Jesus to show who Jesus was, to show Jesus' character. Uh, and he wrote letters to the churches that uh, also showed them what Jesus really cared about. Um, what did Jesus think was important? Uh, and then we talked last week about how Jesus was the only one worthy to open uh, the scroll because Jesus was slain. He was the, like a lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And so he's worthy because he's rescued all people. So he's worthy of all praise um, because he's rescued people from every tribe and tongue and language and nation. So Jesus is the worthy lamb. And in today's lesson, finally, we're going to talk about Jesus returning. This is how the whole story is going to end. The whole story of the Bible that started in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth is going to end with and in the end, he will make a new heavens and new earth, and God will live with his people forever. And that's where the story is going to end. So uh, I'm excited about our lesson for today, and we need to get to it. And so our lesson for today comes from the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 21. So let's pray, and then let's get to Revelation chapter 21. Dear Holy Spirit, you're real, and you're here right now. And I'm thankful for that because I need your help as I teach. And these boys and girls need your help as they listen, no matter where they are, um, at home, outside, in a car, um, wherever they are, Holy Spirit, you are there to help them believe what this lesson says. So please, will you help them to do that? Help them to believe the Bible so that then they can obey the Bible and worship Jesus, uh, who is going to return. And he's going to destroy all evil and he's going to make everything new. He's going to make everything right. So uh, please, will you give them grace to believe this lesson in Jesus' name? Amen. All right, so I'm going to Revelation 21, and this is the last, these are the last things that John is going to see in his vision. It says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So a new sky and a new earth. Why did he need to see a new heaven and a new sky? John says, it's because the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. In other words, the sky that you see right now and the earth that I see right now, one day, they're going to be gone. They're going to be gone forever. They're going to pass away. Uh, no more sea. Instead, there's going to be something brand new. And so John's trying to describe for us this day when there's a whole new earth and a whole new sky. And John sees amazing things, like he sees a new city, a special city. He calls it the holy city. Uh, it's a new Jerusalem. And it came down out of heaven from God. And he describes it like, like a bride on her wedding day that came out to meet her husband for the first time. It's all dressed up and it's fancy. And he ha heard a loud voice from the throne. And the voice said, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. This is the answer to so many promises from the Old Testament all the way through the New Testament that one day God will come and be with his people. This answers what Adam and Eve needed in the garden when God kicked them out of the garden and said, you can't be here with me. He's going to undo the curse and God is going to be with his people. And, and when God made the Israelites his people, uh, now there is a new people that is not just Jew, but also anyone who's not a Jew that will be God's people and he will be with them and he will bless them. He says, um, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death will be no more. There's no more dying when Jesus returns because Jesus is going to destroy all evil and make everything right. So he's going to get rid of, of crying. He's going to get rid of death. There's not going to be mourning or crying or even pain. When Jesus comes back the second time, there won't even be pain anymore because all of those things that used to be have passed away. They're gone. So just like this earth is going to be gone and there's a new earth, all these former things that we're used to, like uh, crying and sadness and things dying and people dying and, and things being hard, all of that will be done away because when Jesus comes back, he's going to make everything right. He's going to make everything new again. And uh, and so that's what our verse was, Revelation 21, 5. He who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. There's something new coming. Jesus is going to undo all of the curse of sin and all of the sadness of sin, and it's going to be a whole new way of living. And he said, Write this down because these words are trustworthy and true. And and the voice said that whoever um, whoever would believe would would 
he would be their God and that person would be his son. There is good news in that. But even in the good news, boys and girls, we have to be sure that, that we realize that there's also uh, the fact that God is going to destroy evil. So people that are evil, instead of being with God and getting all of these blessings, instead they're going to be punished by God. He says uh, that as for the cowards or the faithless, people that don't believe, uh, the detestable for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, people that have ever told a lie, he says their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Boys and girls, there is a death that's even worse than when we die on this earth. And that's the second death. And, and that's to be uh, thrown into the lake of fire where instead of being in God's um, blessed presence where he is only giving good things, then in the lake of fire, God's presence is only there to judge. In other words, he's only there punishing. And instead of people being blessed and having their tears wiped away, instead they're just punished by God forever and ever. It's a horrible thing to think about, but it's an important thing to think about because this is who our Jesus really is. Jesus is going to destroy all evil. And people that do evil, he can't just let them into heaven if they haven't asked him for forgiveness. Uh, if, if he hasn't paid for their sins, uh, then they're going to have to be in this lake of fire forever. While that's a terrible thing, it's a true thing. And it's something that you need to know, boys and girls, uh, that you will either live with God forever and ever in a new heaven and, and a new earth, or you will live in punishment forever and ever in the lake of fire. What makes the difference between those two is what you believe about Jesus. What do you do with Jesus? Do you believe that Jesus lived without ever sinning? And then he died on the cross, not because he did wrong, but because you did wrong. He died in your place. And then you believe that he rose from the dead. Because anybody that believes that good news, that gospel message, he promises, I will be your God forever and ever, and I will be with you. But there is punishment for people that don't believe that good news. And Revelation tells us that. God is going to destroy all evil, and that includes evil people. But he's going to make things new. He's going to make things right. Uh, and so John uh, kept having this vision, and and he saw what he describes as, again, like a bride. And he sees this city, and it's a beautiful city. It's got jewels in its foundation. Uh, it's shining. It's clear. It's got gates and walls, and, and, it's, and it's beautiful. And it's a new city because God is going to make all things new, including where Christians will live forever and ever. So Christians, people who are in Christ, get to live with God forever and ever in a new city on a new earth, right? So People will still have bodies. Christians will still have heads and eyes and ears and, and, and bodies that can walk around this new city, but they get new bodies. Everything is made new. So instead of having sinful bodies or broken bodies, they get even new bodies. It's an amazing promise that God's going to make everything new, including even the cities that we live in down here on earth. I was thinking about illustrating this, and I asked uh, Silas if he had any broken toys, and he thought about it for a little bit. And he said, I do have some broken toys. And um, he got some broken toys that reminded me of something that happened to me when I was a boy. Um, when we think of making things new, it's because some things are old and, and broken. Like our world is broken and sin breaks things and wrecks things. So God has to make it new. Um, but what, what Silas had, um, do any of, you, any of you guys have some of these? He had some army men. And I don't know if you can see, can you see this army man? He's, he's got some problems. His gun broke off here, and look, his feet fell off here. So if I try to get him to stand up, boop, he just falls over because, uh, because his legs got broken. And he's got some other guys um, that were the same way. Like, look at this guy. Oh, he has the same problem. You know, his, his little leg thing broke off. And so now he just falls over. He's, he's broken, right? Here's a guy, and he's got his, he's got his little uh, leg thing that helps him stand up. But can you see what his problem is? Look. Oh, his gun and his arm broke off. He's broken, right? Just like our world is broken. Our earth is broken. Things don't work like, like they should. Um, oh, I got another one. Um, this one, uh, he's, his stand is working. But look at that guy. Oh, I'll turn around. He's missing something. Can you guys see what, can you guys see what he's missing? Yeah, 
he's missing an arm. <laughs> His arm broke, all right? And so, so now he's broken, just like our world is broken. And you know what? I don't have the ability to make these brand new for Silas. I could go buy him some new ones, but I can't just fix it. And I told you it reminded me of a story. You guys want to hear my story about what happened to my army men when I was a boy? So when I was a boy, I had lots of army men. I mean, dozens and dozens of army men. And so one day I decided it'd be fun to go outside and make a big battle scene. So I took my army men out into the backyard um, where I lived and, and I set them up in the grass. I had tanks and I had walls set up. And so I set up these armies and these guys were all sticking to the grass. They were all over the yard and they were just everywhere. And it was so fun setting up this big battle. But eventually it got time to eat or something. And my mom said, hey, you need to come in. Uh, and so I went inside and then we ate. And then I went around the rest of my night and then I went to bed and uh, I got up the next morning and my dad said, uh, hey, we need to mow the grass today. And uh, that was always one of our jobs was to help mow the grass. And so uh, we had a great big yard um, and we didn't have a push mower. We had one of those mowers that you ride on, right? So I got on my mower and I was just mowing the yard merrily merrily mowing my yard but you know what i'd forgotten about i had forgotten about all my army men and they were all they were all sitting in the grass and so all my army men were sitting in the grass and i was driving my lawnmower and i completely forgot you know what i did i drove my lawnmower right over the top of all my army men boom i mean army men were flying out of of my lawnmower and they were flying out in all kinds of pieces because underneath that lawnmower those blades are going and it just it chopped my army men there was little green pieces all over the yard right they were broken and there was no way i could ever put them back together again they were missing arms and legs and heads and some of them were chopped up and so small i couldn't even tell it was an army man they were broken and boys and girls that's what our world is like our world is broken uh, it doesn't work the way God originally intended it to work. And sin wrecks things and, and sin ruins lives. Sin is awful and God has to punish sin. But there's a day coming when Jesus is going to return and he's going to make everything right. He's going to fix everything that was broken. Anyone who believes in him will get a new body and will get to live with him forever. Anybody who doesn't believe in him and who rejects him and who does evil, all these evil things that John said, whether it's lying um, or, or not believing, all these things that the Bible says are evil, all of those people will be punished because that's part of making everything right. We can't, God can't just let people do wrong and get away with it, right? And so he's going to punish the evildoers, but he's going to live forever and ever in a new beautiful city on a new wonderful earth that's completely free of sin. And John goes on to describe this, what this uh, earth and this city will look like in Revelation 22. Uh, he sees a river that was bright as crystal and it flows out of the throne. And, and he sees a tree of life. And the tree has different kinds of fruit that it gives um, all throughout its season. Um, but it says that the throne of God and the Lamb will be there and his servants will worship him. This is the best thing about heaven is that we'll be able to see God and worship him forever and ever. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and there won't be any more night. So no more nighttime in heaven when Jesus comes back. They won't need any light um, or sun because the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever. When Jesus comes back, lots of things will be different, like no more nighttime and no more sun because Jesus himself will be the bright light that is all that we need. Um, and the voice said to, to John, these words are trustworthy and true, and the Lord, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must soon take place. Boys and girls, this is going to happen soon. He says in verse 7, Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. Boys and girls, there is a blessing for you if you will believe what this book says, that, that Jesus is the lamb who died for sin. If you will believe that he's going to come back and he's going to punish all the evil, but he's going to bless everyone who believes in him, there, there is blessing for you if you will believe this message. And, and this passage tells us it's going to happen soon. Now, we don't know when. We can't put a clock on it. But Jesus says, I'm coming back. So, boys and girls, as we come to the end of our Bibles, do you believe that Jesus is coming back? He told the truth that in the beginning he created the heavens and the earth. He told us that he made everything right and good, but it was Adam and Eve who sinned against him. And, and now all of us are sinners. But the Bible tells us that Jesus came to, to die for our sin, to pay for our sin. Uh, all of these things are true. And the story ends with Jesus himself coming back to be our God and us getting to live with him forever and ever.
You can live with God forever and ever if you will just believe in Jesus, if you will believe that he lived without sin and died in your place and, and rose from the dead because he's stronger than death. So boys and girls, put your trust in Jesus. He's worthy of your worship. And one day everybody will worship him, but you can worship him now, even before he comes back. Jesus is gonna come back. And when he does, he's gonna set everything right. He will make everything right that is wrong. So boys and girls, put your faith in Jesus. He's the one that will never disappoint you. All right, I hope you have a great day whenever you watch this. I hope that you are already believing in Jesus. I hope that maybe you'll read Revelation 21 and 22 and that will help you believe in Jesus. I hope you'll talk to your moms and dads about why they believe in Jesus. Boys and girls, the best news ever is that Jesus can forgive you of your sin so that when you think about him coming back and can fill you with joy and excitement, like it's the best thing ever. There are little good things that we have when we look forward to being with people. Um, there's somebody that's been in this video and maybe you haven't found him yet. I don't know if you've spotted him. Um, we enjoy being with our friends and we might enjoy little things like, uh, like Larry. You guys like Larry? Have you spotted him? Larry's actually been hanging out with, uh, with Luca. Here's my picture of Luca. And, and right here, here was Larry hanging out. Whoop. Larry was hanging out in my picture of Luca. Hey, there are things that you can enjoy down here, but nothing is better than the joy that, that you can look forward to, that Jesus is coming back, uh, that you can be with him forever and ever if you'll just trust him. So believe in him, boys and girls. Have a great day. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.